what four or five things are in the routine of just about every single famous, successful entrepreneur? Stay tuned to find out. Okay, here's the question. How are we dark horses? You know, the ones everyone is betting against, the ones they don't expect to win, place, or even show on the track, and they'll even laugh on us when we talk about trying. How do we show the world our greatness and triumph? Come on. Well, that's the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. This is The Dark Horse Entrepreneur. My name is Tracy Brinkman. Push it up. What is up? What is up, my Dark Horse friends and family? Welcome back to your daily dose of building a winning routine learning. I'm your Dark Horse host, Tracy Brinkman, and you, well, that, my friend, it's infinitely more important. You are a driven entrepreneur or one in the making. Either way, you're here because you're ready to start, restart, kickstart, just start leveling up with some great marketing, personal or business tips and results in order to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it absolutely deserves to be. That's why I'm here hitting you with another daily success episode coming to you straight from the Dark Horse HQ as we dive deep into success with actionable advice, tips and steps designed to help you level up your game because as we already know, there are no shortcuts to success except for taking those little steps towards your goal every single day. And here's a little step you can take from me right now. Yeah, that's right. Go on down there. Hit that subscribe button. Yeah, I know you're getting value from this show and all the amazing guests I'm lucky enough to bring on. So please show the fact you're getting that value to those podcast platforms out there by hitting that subscribe button, leaving us a five-star rating, and dropping us some kind words in the reviews. These subscribes, ratings, and reviews are the way the podcast platforms know you're getting that value, and they use that to lift us up a little bit in the rankings each time so that we can reach more driven entrepreneurs just like yourself. So please, if you're getting that value, take a moment, show the love, and help spread the word. I'm feeling a feeling a pattern coming on for this week. We're talking about routines, right? Kind of comes with the fitness thing we had with Lisa on Monday. But I know if we think about all those entrepreneurs out there, they're all about the grind, the revenue, give me the success, right? Show me the money. I don't want to yell on the microphone. Anyway, but one of the things I've noticed about all the very successful men and women that I have studied over the years, and, you know, we're talking about the Andy Frasillas, the Tim Ferrises, the Gary Vaynerchuks, you know, the, the, the Zig Ziglers, the Jim Rohns, uh, the list goes on and on, the, the Tony Robbins, right? Uh, all these amazing successful people do have a, a commonality in them in that they know about the power of habits, the power of routines. And if you take a close look at the routines of some of these very successful people, you will see that they all have this common characteristic. They have built themselves a routine, a quote unquote system that works. They've identified, they've ad- I- I identified the fact that habits are powerful. They can be powerfully disengaging and demotivating, or they can be powerful in launching you forward into your success. They can get you up off your butt to create the routines and the systems that you need that enable you to complete the tasks that you need to get done to be successful, to help your clients and your prospects be successful, which in turn make you successful. And at the same time, you build in these routines and these systems that keep you from putting your health at risk as well as your business or your relationships. Oh my gosh, you got to build these routines and these systems so that they're cohesive through uh, all the factors of your life. So I wanted to be sure to share with you some of the things I think need to be inside your your system, your routine, whatever it might be. Uh, and I'm going to start off with the 10, right? <laughs> right? Let's call it the top 10. And I think it's it, it's two parts. One, it's the top five goals that you're working for right now. And if you're, you've heard me mention this before in the fact that I used to journal like a madman, right? I mean, just crazy journaling. But one of the things I did for a good long period of time is I wrote down my top 10 goals. But what I want you to do 
is uh, uh, write down your top five goals. Now, when I did this, I did this every single day for it was well over a year. And uh, about monthly, I would go back and, you know, flip through the pages and watch how my top 10 goals um morphed is probably the good word to use you'd see some things you know popping in as something came to mind and then they would slowly you know drop down they were maybe they would come in at a four and then you know like casey's casey say hey this year they dropped two points to number six and then it would drop down to eight and maybe that finally they would fall off or they would come in and on the opposite side, they would come in at an eight and come up to a seven and then a four. And the next thing you know, they're in the top five. You know, as things happen in your life, your, your goals morph. And which is why I say it's very important for you to frequently review uh, your goals and where you, where you're, where they're taking you and the results you're getting from them. So write down the top five goals. Now, but you, Tracy, you said this was 10. Yeah. The other thing you want to do is what are the top five things you want to get done today? So this is a daily task. This is part of your daily routine, right? Uh, we're going to talk about routines a lot on Friday for you, but I want to help build up to this. So the first thing, uh, I think one of the big things that should be a part of your daily routine is this top 10, right? And that top 10 means the top five goals you, you just right off the top of your head you write it goal number one goal number two goal number three goal number, four, number five and then the top five goals that you i'm sorry you write down those top five goals then you want to write down the top five tasks that you would like to get done today all right now the next thing that needs to be a part of your daily routine is your schedule. You need to review your schedule. I think it's something you, something you definitely want to do early in the day. And I know entrepreneurship, we all dream about, oh man, it's going to be this freedom to do what I want, when I want, whenever I want. Well, yes and no. Uh, there are going to be times when your schedule is going to be chock full and you're not going to be able to take that, to, you know, martini lunch break or go golfing that day. But you can work it into your schedule because it's your schedule. It's not your boss's schedule. It's not some corporate America, you know, big name schedule. It's yours. So if you want to uh, fit yourself into your schedule, do it. I know I've met a number of entrepreneurs and we, Lisa mentioned it herself that, uh, you know, they, they tend to work more hours than they did in corporate America, but they're doing it because they love it. They enjoy the clients they're working with. They enjoy the business they're in. So again, you still want to be mindful of creating this schedule that works for you and for your clients and you know, build the schedule in, in, build into your schedule the things that you want to do, the things you want to get done, the things you want to do with your significant other, with your family. If you want to go have that martini lunch and put that in the schedule and make sure no one, you know, trumps that schedule with some date uh, or some meeting that, you know, you think is less important. I don't know. <laughs> and the next one we want to talk about is Lisa's topic of passion fitness, y'all. Oh my God. And I'm actually going to put this as fitness and relationships because these are both ones you have to make conscious efforts towards. You're going to have to make conscious efforts towards maintaining your physical health. And I think inside the physical health also means your mental health, right? Um, you know, you're going to be grinding away sometimes 12, 14 hours. You've got to stand up, move around, let your body work out the kinks a little bit. You got to put into your schedule the time you're going to do some workouts. Maybe you're, and workout can mean anything to you, right? It could be taking a walk around your neighborhood, whatever it is that's working out for you that keeps your body healthy so that you can keep firing on all 8,700 cylinders, right? And then your relationships, right? You're going to get sucked into all kinds of things. You know, an entrepreneurial endeavor is going to suck a lot of time away from you. Be sure you're giving time back to those that you care about that are in your corner, that love you to death and you love them to death. If there's a significant other, a spouse, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, whatever, make sure you're giving them time so they're not feeling slighted by your endeavor. And, and both of these, giving, giving the time, uh, a good amount of time to both of these will help you come back 
to your business feeling clear of mind because, yeah, I just had an awesome weekend with my missus and we're all doing good, right? And, you know, I got a, had a good workout and I'm doing great things with my body. My weight is right where it needs to be. Maybe I'm a little, maybe I'm five, 10 pounds overweight, but man, I'm doing good and I feel good as a result. And all of that feeling good about your relationships, your personal relationships, and feeling good about your body and who you are will translate right back into your ability to deliver more to your audience, to your tribe, to your prospects and your clients. Another one you want to be mindful of, and I mentioned this yesterday, so I'm going to, I won't harp on it too much, is learn, 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 and then go Learn some more, right? Hopefully you're, man, you better be in a business you're passionate about. You better be in a business that you are super curious about because that curiosity is going to move you to learn and learn more. And that learning could be reading books. It could be going to conferences, virtual or live, whatever it may be, you know, engaging in courses, you know, getting into a mastermind listening to podcasts like this one, right? Where you're growing your knowledge base so that you can be that expert that your prospects and your clients and your business is expecting you to be. So make it a daily priority. And as a daily priority, you know, I'm not saying, hey, you got to throw a go into a, a, a mastermind every single day, but certainly you could learn a little bit every single day even if that just means all right for 30 minutes i'm gonna listen to some podcasts that are focused on my industry or i'm gonna read a book or uh, some articles that are focused on my industry or i'm gonna participate in this mastermind on this day from you know 2 p.m to 4 p.m to grow my knowledge and my connections in my industry Here's the cool thing. This, if it's a, if you're in a business you're passionate about and you're curious about, you'll find that 10 minutes, that 15 minutes, that 30 minutes will turn into 40, 45, an hour, an hour and a half, just because you're feeding and you get into it and you're like, Oh my God, this is amazing. And you want to learn more and you will be that expert, your business your industry, and your clients need you to be. And last but not least, I want to leave you with, uh, what word do I want to use here? Uh, rhythms. Rhythm and flow. You could call it seasonality. All businesses have them. There's a peak season, then there's a valley, and then there's another maybe small rise, and then there's a maybe bigger valley, and then you get back to the peak season. Learn what those are for your industry. You know, uh, if you're in the apparel industry, maybe there's a big spike in the summertime, and then there's another spike in the, you know, well, maybe that spike is really in the springtime, and then kind of levels off a slight bump in summer, and then a big jump again in fall, right? And there's valid reasons reason if you're in the wedding industry right the big peak is in you know it's like late winter early spring then it falls off and then there's a little rise later on what are the what is the rhythm of your business when are your your prospects out there buying the most and then let's take that that uh, that rhythm and scheduling a little bit deeper how does it go for your day I know so many entrepreneurs, they want to go in, and I mentioned earlier, they want to have that time freedom. But you have to remember, sometimes there's a rhythm. You got to get into it, man. There's going to be days you're going to be spending not, you know, not nine to five. It's not nine to five. You're not in corporate America anymore, man. You did that cubicle express or escape. There might be days when you're doing a 12, 14, 20 hour shift. But again, it's something you're doing because it's for you. It's for your clients. It's for your business right? It's for those that you love. I mean, and right? Entrepreneurship, it's the long game, y'all. You're not in here for these short wins. No, no, that's not what you're here for. You're here to give big time. So you're going to have to adapt to those different stages, those different flows, get to know what they are. Some of those flows are going to have to, you're going to have to grind those 20 hour days, those 15 hour days out. And then when it's in that lull, okay, well, you can let off the gas a little bit, go into research mode, right? And do a different kind of tactic. And as you prep for that next big push. 
Learn the cycles of your business. And I think the other thing is, uh, just because there's a given cycle doesn't mean you can't offset that cycle. I know uh, I've been in businesses where we're like, all right, this is the time of the year and it was spring when our business tends to do the least amount of business. How can we fix that? Right. So now you can come up with some creative ways of how you can deliver tools and, and uh, products and services to your core clients at a time when maybe they normally are thinking, all right, this is when I'm in cruise control. I'm just riding the, the wave before the next big uh, splash hits. How can you deliver them more value during that quiet time? And then that's how you can offset some of those lulls in your business cycle. All right, my dark horse friends and family, tomorrow we're going to chat about some things you can do and some routines that you can put into place to enhance your mindset. All right, now I know you want to keep getting all these amazing daily success tips, so be sure you go on down there, hit that subscribe button. Yep, and while you're there, drop us a five-star rating. Leave us some kind words in the reviews. As I mentioned earlier, these subscribes, ratings, and reviews, they tell those podcast platforms that you are getting that value. Lift us up a little bit in the rankings so that we can reach more driven entrepreneurs just like yourself. So please take a moment, show the love, and help spread the word. Then. Come on over and join us in the Facebook group. You know, rather than give you all the spiel about the face, there'll be a link right down here inside the show. You can go right there. It's called the Dork Horse Tribe. Come on in there. Join us. I look forward to meeting you in the group. In the meantime, you get out there. You run your race. You get your results and then come into the group. Let me hear about them, right? I want to celebrate with you. Until tomorrow, think successfully and take action. Thank you for listening to the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. And you know this. Thanks for tuning in. Check us out at www.darkhorseschooling.com. All right. My name is Tracy Brinkman.